What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today, we're going to be doing a Gold Lewis matchup chart. Of course, I am the Gold Lewis guy right now when it comes to content. And I wanted to give you guys my opinion, and I made this a sub goal, and we hit it. So we're doing this live on Twitch right now. Shout out to everyone in the chat. What's going on, YouTube? Hi, YouTube. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Starting with Soul. Soul bad guy, currently one of the top three in the game, definitely. Used to be considered the best. Surprisingly, this matchup is even. This, uh, the neutral between Soul and Goldus is actually super fun to play, and it's super interactive, and both characters have things going for them. And yeah, so super, super fun. Uh, notably, JD is super strong in this matchup against Soul. You can go over Gunflame. You can go over a lot of the different things. Waytham, thank you so much for the 100 bitties. You like and subscribe right now. This is a threat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, Waytham. JD is notably strong, going for any kinds of raw 6 8 4 stuff. I mean, th honestly, it, this is going to sound really cringe to say, but the Gold Lewis Soul matchup is like... It, you're playing neutral <laughs> it's a it's an honest matchup despite soul not uh you know being perceived as honest all right before anything sorry we need to say that gold lewis his matchup chart is going to look very skewed in the bad direction because gold lewis is the kind of character that will overall like over time they're going to lose more neutral and they're going to lose more engagements but they're going to get much much more reward in the knockdown of course the fd changes make this like reward not as good but there's still some things we can do. We, you know, Goldus is not down yet. Still semi-viable. I'm still having fun with him. I'm still winning a lot with him. But uh, yeah, I should give that, uh, I should let you all know that before we keep going. Next, we have Kai. This matchup is probably, honestly, another even matchup. Fairly honest. You do have to deal with Kai's zoning stuff. But I actually don't find it that hard to deal with. I have played against a couple Kais that have been able to keep me out entirely. But there aren't many of those. Stank Boys definitely did that to me. Uh, I can't think of anyone else that has done that to me consistently. But yeah, the, the matchup is actually pretty solid. Obviously, Kai lacking in offensive options. You can kind of just sit there and wait and then 2P the Fujiwara arc and get your knockdown and then, you know, win. Of course, against both these characters, Soul and Kai, you definitely want to be playing around their DP because getting DP'd once probably means losing the game. It's going to be hard to get back in. The advantage, though, of playing these like Soul and Kai kind of players is that they they kind of like being up close to you too so uh, a lot of the time you know they're gonna come to you someone's gonna win the scramble and then either person gets to start their pressure guy obviously has much much less reward for getting in his pressure is not great but of course he's got those like annoying kind of tick throw things but yeah i think overall this matchup is pretty even oh <clears throat> next we have may may okay uh another top like four-ish character in the game i'm not exactly sure where i fall on that but may is another even matchup Against May, you have some interesting things to play around the Dolphins with. You can round start like 5P or 2P to deal with the Dolphin. You can 684H out of the block stone of a fast Dolphin to cover all of the options. This is something that not a lot of characters have against May, where you can just cover her every single time that she goes for fast Dolphin. And this kind of forces the May to either give up pressure after every fast Dolphin, or go for a lot more heavy dolphins. And when they go for heavy dolphins, you can guess. And once you guess right, you get a knockdown. And if May doesn't have meter, then you're you're probably going to win the game. Yeah, that, that's kind of another fun matchup, I'd say. I think these three are probably the most fun matchups to play as Goldless. Actually, no, th there's something I'm missing. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. These three are super fun matchups, though. They're definitely even. Next, we have Axel. So, hmm. So, pre gold neutral buffs and axel got nerfed a bit right this was definitely below bad this was like a, a really really poor matchup really not fun to play and now i would say this matchup is probably only bad axel should probably be winning this matchup more often than not but gold Lewis still is a way in it's probably like a 6.5 to 3.5 matchup if i had to guess maybe a six six four and yeah, it's actually totally doable. I find a lot of the time that I play against Axles, if they're just worse players than me, I just tend to win anyways. And uh, notably, I have beaten Yurikov's Axel. Uh, they're a very good Axel player. I don't know how I did that, but Shwelly always brings that up. Shout out to Shwelly, by the way, another Gold Lewis player. But yeah, now that you have extra neutral options with the J Behemoth Typhoons, you actually have a lot of ways to get in on Axel. Once you get on the axle, it's really tough for the axle. Once again, I want to say, 
that just because a character is in bad does not mean that matchup is unwinnable. At any point, if you get a knockdown on one of these characters, it becomes pretty advantageous for you. But you have to still bait their bait their burst and whatnot. You still need to bait all the resources, and then you can probably just win the game. But yeah, that's just kind of how it is with Gold Loose. Once again, this is going to skew downwards, despite us starting with three evens. Next, we have Chip. I think this is another one of the bad matchups. Probably worse than Axel. Yeah, I would definitely say it's worse than Axel. I wonder if I want to order these. I'm not going to order them, but just know that Chip is worse than Axel. Chip is very difficult to deal with for Gold Lewis because anytime you go for a Raw Behemoth Typhoon and you whiff, the Chip pretty much gets him for free, and Chip can be a real, real nuisance for Gold Lewis to deal with. Not, It's not like one button fits all situations when you pick a time to mash. Like, a lot of the time, like, your 2P or 5P will just whiff inexplicably for no reason. And it does not feel good. I've got to say, it does not feel good. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that matchup needs much more... Uh, explanation it's just really tough for gold list to deal with really fast characters and we will talk about one exception throughout this next we have our first advantageous match i think potemkin i think gold list actually beats potemkin's neutral which is surprising because gold list should not have a matchup where gold list wins the neutral right so gold list can actually use 684 as a tool to cover pretty much everything that potemkin does including the armored moves if you have the RC to like continue. But otherwise, uh, Gold Lewis kind of just dominates the round start and the neutral, in my opinion. 684 shuts down Megafist. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying, Tiger. Uh, Gold Lewis has the only option in the game that can just consistently beat back Megafist and forward Megafist constantly, constantly, constantly. It's so very strong. And it's a definite reason as to why I think Potemkin might be Gold Lewis's best matchup. And just because I say best matchup, I don't mean uh, it's like overwhelmingly Gold Lewis favored. I think it's probably like 5.5, 4.5 in favor of Gold Lewis. There's also an argument that it's even, that it's even Stevens. But uh, yeah, I, I personally love playing this matchup. It, it always feels great every time. And Gold Lewis has very consistent round start options against Potemkin with Far Slash beating like almost everything. And then 684 beating everything else. The only thing Gold Lewis can't really deal with is like a 2P sometimes, but you can punish that with, I believe, like backdash 684. And yeah, I like that matchup a lot. I think the, the pot doesn't really have a hard time against Gold Lewis unless the Gold Lewis is playing really campy. But in the same way that Nago can camp out Gold Lewis, I think Gold Lewis can camp out Potemkin. And on to the next person. Next, we have Faust. Faust is another one of those characters like Axel, where they can keep you out fairly consistently. But once you get in, it's kind of over for them. And of course, Faust notably dies very, very quickly. Low HP, low guts. I'm in between on slightly disadvantageous and bad. I'm prob... Mm, I think I'd rather play against a Faust than an Axel for the most part. In this matchup, you really need to be able to do raw 6 8 fours to catch the Faust out of the upper sections of the screen. It's a difficult thing to do, but once you get it down, you can start sniping uh, Faust out of this guy. Mm, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about it. It's just a zoner with a big body, right? Like, they're going to be slightly advantaged in the matchup. Next, we have Milia. So, Gold Lewis actually got nerfed, right? We know this. Gold Lewis got nerfed, and Milia got big buffed. Previously, I would say Milia is probably Gold Lewis's best matchup. Now, I would say... I, I still think that Gold Lewis did his advantage in this match. I actually looked at Ali Yoon's uh, tier list, like, matchup chart for Milia. Alien's are like a, an FGC legend, by the way, if you don't know. And they play Milia, and they said that this was majorly advantage for Milia, but personally, I've not seen it. I think I've beaten every Milia, including people that are just better than me. I've beaten Kazam, I think, every time I've played against them. Uh, that's the first Milia that comes to mind, but I've played against other Milias as well. I haven't played Yurikov's Milia, I don't think. But the Milia matchup seems really fun, because... You get much, much, much high reward for just touching the Milia than she does for you. And you're always willing to guess to the mash because if you get hit, you know, you take like three damage. You move on to the next one. You mash the next time and then they die. Yeah, it's just, uh, in my opinion, the neutral is probably slightly Milia favored. But the reward is so skewed in Gold Lewis, in Gold Lewis's favor, that I have to give this one to Gold Lewis. Milia scares me. She shouldn't if you play Gold Lewis. If you're playing anyone else, yeah, it's tough. Next, we have Zato. 
Zato's one that I'm torn on because Zato's are... Thank you, FP, for the drip Zato. Please, no one else do that. <laughs> good time, good time. <laughs> All right, so next we have Zato. And on one hand, Zato can keep you out like these other zoners. I don't think they have the tools to keep you out as often. And you also have some gimmicks where you can go for like the, the GAT or you can go for the uh, 2 and 4 s to destroy Eddie. You also have some pretty good buttons to challenge Eddie. Like your 5P is good at catching the frog. Your 5K is good at catching anything on the ground. But every gold loose that I've ever talked to says that this matchup's very bad. I don't think it's terrible, terrible. Like I think I'm pro I probably have a higher win rate against Zatos than Axles and Chips. But I think you have to play very, very well. But I'm actually gonna put this in slightly disadvantageous over bad. This might be uh, against the common gold Lewis belief. But personally, even when I'm playing against really good axles, I still feel like I have a fighting chance. Even when I'm getting zoned out, you know, all it takes is one good read with a 5K or a 5P or uh, getting a drone out. And all of a sudden I'm in on Zato. Once again, these four characters, all kind of, or sorry, these three characters, all similar in that they keep you out. But once you're in, you probably win the game. Next, we have Ramlethal. Ramlethal, in my eyes, is probably one of the worst matchups. I'm not a fan of playing this. She just can kind of keep you out with far slash. Going for a 684 against her, I seem to always get counter hit by some kind of like far slash, heavy slash, J, JS. Why have you not liked and subscribed yet, Bruv? <laughs> okay, thank you, Waytham. And yeah, dealing with her corner pressure is very, very bad as Gold Lewis. Gold Lewis doesn't have any way to just consistently get out. Even when you super jump out of the first sword and they're farther away, they can still catch you with the second sword or they can jump up and JP you. It really does feel perilous sometimes. But once again, Ram is going to have the same uh, flaws in that just no defensive options. Once you knock her down, if she has no resources, you're probably winning in the spot. Next, we have Leo. Leo, how do I feel about Leo? Hmm, this isn't a matchup that I think about a lot because I'm actually fairly good at like grabbing the cross up very, very consistently. And I mean, I've been saying this the whole time, but once you get a knockdown with Gold Lewis, you're probably going to win that round unless they have the resources to get out. And because I can consistently grab the cross up, I always get that knockdown into a safe jump and it feels good. I don't think that it's a bad matchup. I'll count that out right away. Slightly disadvantageous. It might be... I, I'm going to put this in even, actually. The... The, uh... Actually, you know what? No, I, mm, I'll keep it in even. All right. One note is that you can't really go for the cross-up stuff against Leo because uh, Leo has the uh, down-up DP. So that's just off the table. Also, Leo's DP, obviously, you can, like, just get out of a lot of uh, behemoth and behemoth and behemoth situations. Of course, you can call this out. It's not the worst. Uh, your JD is really strong in this matchup. You can jump over Leo's projectiles, and if they go for the heavy one ever, you can counter hit, get a knockdown, go for a safe jump, and you're back in there. Yeah, I think the neutral in this is probably similar to Souls, except Leo's neutral is much worse, but his offense is way more degenerate, right? Yeah, I, th I think even's probably a good spot. It might, there's an argument for slightly disadvantageous, but I think it's probably closer to even than anything. Next, we have Nago. This has quickly become the worst matchup for Gold Lewis on top of Nago getting back-to-back -back buffs. Uh, Nago already having a really extended grab range. Nago having a really great back dash. This matchup is tough, man. I think Nago might be Gold Lewis's worst matchup in the entire game. Okay, let me get to explaining this. So first of all, I mentioned the back dash. Nago has a big old backdash. You can't do anything against this guy. He can FD backdash almost everything. You have to truly call it out. Next, the grab range. After a close slash, if you did it close, you can't... Well, obviously, it's a close slash, right? You're going to do it close. Nago can grab every single non-true option after it. All of them. The quick overhead off of close slash. Nago can grab you out of that. There's a three-frame gap. Nago's extended grab will grab you up. You're dead. You're going to lose that round, right? You just lost your pressure and gave them the advantage. It's terrible. Of course, Nago also has really big buttons to deal with you ever like whiffing anything or challenging them ever. They have their far slash, their 5H. They have Beyblade. They have now... Okay. <laughs> they buffed the clone for some reason. One saving grace in this matchup was that if you got far enough away, you could 
oppress the Naga with Gat, or you could throw down a 2 and 4S, the Thunderbird. They just took that out. Nago now has a full screen clone. Why? Why would you do this, Daisuke? Yeah, this matchup feels terrible. It feels absolutely terrible. But surprisingly, I do pretty well against Nagos. I think a lot of people just don't abuse the degenerate stuff. And, you know, I respect that. I mean, a lot of it, I'm sure, is because people just don't know about it. I'm sure if people knew how to deal with me on Gold Lewis, they would probably do it. But, man, I hate this matchup. When someone knows what they're doing, it's near impossible to win. Every single time you get in, FD backdash. Every time when you're in neutral, you're going to get stuffed out with something. It's tough, man. It's tough. Next, we have Geo. Geo is actually, before, I would have put this in bad. Because Geo very easily moves in and out of your ranges, making it very difficult for you to ever go for BTs because you get full punished. But the FD change, I think, actually is favorable for Gold Lewis in this matchup. So Gold Lewis has a much easier time dealing with Geo because now you can kind of FD her. Even though she can FD you too, but like everyone else is already FDing you. Like she doesn't really get the plus. But FD really hurt Geo and I find it a lot easier to deal with her now. When it comes to neutral, you kind of just have to throw out moves. Like I like to throw out 5Ks and 2Ks to stuff out her dashes. I, I don't think it's too bad anymore. Because when she does get in, it feels like she doesn't get as much reward, and that feels really good for me as a player. And yeah, that's all we have to say about the matchup. Geo is a very, very basic character. Her her gimmick is the great movement that she has. The movement does counter Gold Lewis, but now her pressure just doesn't feel strong. It doesn't feel as strong as these people. So I, I don't think that she can be in the same tier as these four evil lords of the game. Next, we have Angie. I think previously I've said that Gold Lewis was favored in the matchup, but Langi is no longer here. I think Angie is finally among us. And because of this, I have to say this matchup is probably even. So it's hard. To, so I will say that this skews to slightly disadvantageous because Angie has the ability to spin through all of your stuff. And the longer the stat goes, the more it, like. They can spin through some of your behemoth uh, into behemoth stuff, but, uh, you know, it's kind of like a hard read. And if you don't do it, they, it's like a back and forth thing. So Angie does have uh, something that other people don't, but, you know, you, you can hard read it. It's the same way that you would work around a DP, right? Uh, the real problem in this matchup is that Angie's co completely stops you from ever being in the air. And because of this, to play this matchup, you really need to be good at doing a raw 684. Every single time they co, you need to be able to punish that with the 684, get the knockdown, and get in. And yeah, that's the most notable thing in the matchup. Of course, Angie's offense is way, way, way better, so he's just more annoying to play against. But despite that, I would say it's probably even skewing towards disadvantageous, but probably even. Next, we have Eno. Man, Eno is one of these. <laughs> Eno is one of those characters like Ramathal that I just hate. I have a passion of hatred for this character. A disaster of passion, I guess you could call it. Oh man. So Eno has really great neutral options against Gold Lewis, including Chemical Love and her note. And notably, you can do Chemical Love into note to just completely shut out Gold Lewis in the neutral. You also have to play this mind game between 5K and 5P to stuff out her Stroke the Big Tree, which is the low profile option, and a dash in to catch her in the air. It's really tough. And the chemical love is very, very difficult to deal with a neutral and the noted as well. You're so if Eno notes and you go for uh, your 214S at the same time, it leads to a pretty neutral state where neither side really wins, but you're you just used all your meter for that, right? And Eno didn't do anything. Eno can just throw out another one. So in the end, it leads to her advantage. She kind of bullies you in the neutral. If you get blocking, you probably lose. If she gets you, if you get her blocking, you probably win. It's uh, very similar, once again, to uh, Axel, Zato, Faust. I'm not sure if I want to put in disadvantageous or bad. It's probably somewhere in between, but I don't... All right, I'm going to say that it's the least bad of the bads. That's what I'm going to say. It's the least bad of the bads. It's bad, but again, you get in, you win, right? And it's not as bad as playing against an Axel or a Ram or a Nago. Finally, we have Jacko, another zoning character that dies in one hit. This is a hard one to say. I haven't played against many Jackos. It is going to feel, once again, very similar to those characters. 
and I can't really put it in a spot. It's definitely once again between these two areas because it is the zoner. It's going to be hard for you as a big body to get in and get the knockdown. I haven't played against a very, very good Jacko. I've played against like decent Jackos. And I want to say that it's probably slightly disadvantageous because I just don't think Jacko has enough reward when getting in. Because once she gets in, she still has to take a risk to get a minion out. She does dominate the neutral with the minions, but you can kind of just play ultra, ultra passive, get your 2 4 s out. That's going to cover all the minions and then just dash block your way in there. 2P is a godsend. Yes, 2P is a godsend in this matchup, surely. I just don't think Jacko is that good of a character, honestly. I like Jacko. I think she's strong in the sense that every character in the game is strong. But I just don't think she has enough reward for finally getting in. And I think your 2 on 4 s is a really good answer for dealing with minions. Uh, try not to jump in this matchup if you're a gold loose player. Because you will just get bopped and bopped and bopped by these minions. And I think that's it. Thank you everybody for watching. This has been the gold loose matchup chart. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I will see you all later. Bye-bye.